Have you ever wondered what separates a good data portfolio from an exceptional one? What can you create that will catch the attention of recruiters? Today, I'm diving deep into nine original and impactful data analytics project ideas that will not only make your portfolio stand out, but will also resonate with every employer. Okay, and so the first idea is about uh, e-commerce sales analysis. And so I went to Kaggle. This is the uh, the data set that we're going to be used. So he has a usability of 10. So uh, it seems that is a clean data set that we can use for our analysis. And if I scroll down, we have different data sets that we can use. So the one that we're going to be using is this one, the first one, Amazon sales report CSV. And so if you download it, it looks uh, like this. You have an order ID, a date, uh, you have the status of the order, fulfillment, uh, sales channel, you have a lot of columns, you have the quantity, the currency, the amount, the ship city, ship states. So you see a lot of information in here. And again, if I go into cargo, I can see uh, the amount of data that we have. And so we have actually 120,000 unique values. So pretty big uh, data set to work with. And so my idea is to use this data set to create a dashboard. So I will leave it to you to choose, for example, between Power BI and uh, Tableau. And the dashboard, you could do something uh, divided into different sections. So the first one could be a sales analysis. And so, you know, uh, understanding what is the total revenue gener generated over a specific time period. What are the top 10 products by sales? What is the average order value? Then a second section could be customer analysis. So what are the top cities, states, countries for sales? What are any trends in uh, order cancellation? Then another section could be shipping analysis. So what is the average shipping time? How does shipping time vary between uh, different shipping services? Then another section could be on product analysis. So which categories of products are most popular? What is the average quantity of products ordered? Then we can have a promotional analysis section. So our effect is our uh, promotions like average discount, uh, increase in sales during promotion, and which promotions are most commonly used. Then we can have a geographical analysis on so trends in key markets and also seeing emerging markets that are showing growth. Then we have seasonal analysis. So you can uh, check, for example, for things like festival and holidays and how these uh, affect the, the sales. And then you can have another section on uh, return and cancellation analysis. So, you know, what is the return and cancellation rate? And then last, you can do a profitability analysis and so see the profit margin for different products or categories. And so important point, why is this project useful? Because it demonstrates the ability to derive actionable insights from sales data. And this is essential in retail and e-commerce sectors. Another cool thing about this data set is that imagine you have an interview with Nike. You can actually put the Nike logo in your dashboard so that you can actually go to the interview saying that you did a project based on a sales data set that might be similar to a data set that Nike is working with. And if I were a recruiter, I would definitely like to know more about the project. And so as you can see, this is a good way to kind of personalize the project according to the interview that you're doing. And by the way, if you want to give it a go with these projects, check the video description to get all the data set that we're going to cover today. So the second video idea is about web traffic analysis. And so in here, we're going to use this data set that I actually found on uh, within Google. So it's called Google Data Analytics Sample Dataset from uh, BigQuery. And so this sample dataset provides um, Google Analytics 360 dataset that can be accessed via BigQuery. So BigQuery is a famous tool to use SQL for analysis. Uh, which again could be a very good addition to your portfolio. And so in this article, actually, you have all the details to kind of set up your project. Um, so you don't have an, any uh, kind of, you know, long setup or installations needed. You can just go to your uh, console uh, in Google Cloud. Uh, so obviously, you can set it up following these instructions here. And so this is uh, how it looks like when you set it up. This is your um, SQL workspace. And then when you're done setting up your uh, Google Cloud console, then you can use this link to access the, uh, the data set. So we're going to click on here. I'm going to click on uh, view data set. And in here, if I scroll down, this is the data set that we can use for this project. And so in here, I can click on these three dots. I can do query. And basically here I can start writing my query based on this uh, data set. So, and so let's try to run this one, for example. 
and from here I can see basically the data set that we can use. As you can see, it's about the visit ID to a specific website, uh, the date of the visit, and a lot more information. So this project is amazing because uh, you can use SQL to do analysis on this data set. Is a Google Analytics data set that comes from uh, Google itself. And so again, why this project can be useful? Because it is essential for digital marketing roles and shows ability to interpret web metrics and make data-driven recommendations. And also, as I show you, we are going to use uh, Google BigQuery, which again is a very popular tool uh, to use SQL. Next up, we have another data set coming from Kaggle, this time about the supply chain analysis. Supply chain analytics, as you can see here, is very useful useful in uh, industries like manufacturing, retail, healthcare, and logistics. And if you're not familiar with that, it's about the movement of products and services from suppliers to customers. And so, for example, in here, you have a data set with uh, 100 unique values. So kind of a small uh, data set is a CSV file called supply chain data. And we have data about uh, different uh, product types, the price, the availability, uh, number of products, the revenue generated. Uh, the customer demographics, the stock levels, lead times, and all the quantities. And so again, here you can probably create a dashboard, again, either Power BI or Tableau, or you can even look for other BI tools like Looker or QuickSight. And so one section could be about the cost analysis. So, you know, what are the most costly products to produce? How do manufacturing costs relate to selling prices? What is the overall profitability? So revenue minus cost for each product. Then you can do a supply chain analysis. So what are the average lead times for different products? How does lead time affect stock levels and availability? Are there correlations between uh, defect rates and inspection uh, results? Then you can do a logistics analysis. So what are the most common transportation modes used? How different transportation modes affect lead times and cost? Which routes are most uh, commonly used and what is the impact on uh, cost and lead time? And lastly, optimization questions. So what can be done to reduce lead times and how can the supply chain be optimized to reduce cost? So here is your suggestion based on the analysis that you, uh, that you created. And so again, why this project is useful is because it's relevant for operations and logistic roles and demonstrates understanding of key inventory metrics. So next project idea is about market research survey. And so this is a demographic survey conducted by a market research department. And so we are basically trying to see uh, customers' preferences regarding the computer brand. And so this is the data set in uh, Excel. So we have the salary, age, um, a level of education, the car, the zip code, the credit, and the brand. So we have zero and one. And so even if we don't have the name of the brand, we can assume that, for example, zero could be uh, Apple, for example, and one could be another uh, computer brand like HP. And so this is probably an analysis that you can do in Excel or actually using Python or R for a bit more coding and programming. Again, I will give you some ideas. So the first idea would be to uh, do a brand preference analysis. And so understanding what are the factors that influence an individual brand preference. Is there a correlation between brand preference and salary, for example, or education? Then a second part of the analysis could be around clustering or segmentation. So uh, we identify distinct segments or clusters of individuals based on their features, for example, high salary, young individuals, so low salary, older individuals, something like that. What are defining characteristics of these segments? And the next one would be a trend analysis. So are younger individuals more inclined towards the specific brands as compared to older individuals, for example? And so, and so the point here is to understand if there is a specific group of people that prefer one brand over the other. So that, for example, the business could potentially uh, set that as the, the target of a marketing campaign. And so again, if we uh, try to see why this project is useful, it's because for roles in market research or human resources, this project demonstrates your ability to use data to to understand consumer behavior, preferences, and trends, which are essential for informing a company's marketing strategy and business decisions overall. Another very cool project idea is the expense tracking and analysis. And so this is actually based on a uh, personal data set. And so you should be able to get a personal bank statement that uh, you can find, for example, in the uh, banking app. So, you know, most of uh, banks, they offer this uh, service where you can, um, you know, access the app of the bank and then download the personal statement. 
And so you can use that for analysis of your spending, uh, tracking your expenses and try to see, you know, something interesting about that. And obviously, if you don't have the option to download a personal statement from your banking app, then you can use the link in the description to download a data set that you can use to still follow this project. And I actually already created a video tutorial about this project and uh, I will link up here in case you want to check it out. But this is basically what I've done only using Python. So it's a little dashboard uh, where I can select the category of my spending and I, I can see the uh, overview of my income, uh, recurring expenses, uh, no recurring expenses, also the savings, uh, also kind of the trends by category of last month expenses. Uh, and you know be more detailed information at the bottom and so a cool idea to uh, recreate this project is to actually use python only and through your code you can get the whole data maybe you can uh, use the uh, api to connect directly to your uh, banking app if that's again not an option then you can uh, download the bank statement upload it in google drive and then using the google drive api to use uh, Python to connect to your Google space and retrieve all the information from that. And then you can merge all the data through uh, different months so that you have a one consolidated data set that you can use for your analysis. And uh, as I showed you in, uh, uh, in the video just now, uh, you can create a dashboard using Python only instead of uh, relying on other tools like Tableau or Power BI. And so why this project is useful? Because it shows your capability to manage and uh, analyze financial data, which is a valuable skill in many corporate roles. And the other benefits of this project is that you can show how you use your data analysis skills in your day-to-day, -day, which demonstrate uh, also that you are truly passionate about uh, this field. Okay, so next project is a data cleaning and data exploration type of project. So in here again, I'm using Kaggle and I found this uh, data science job posting on Glassdoor. And so this is a data set that was uh, scrapped from the Glassdoor website. And actually there are two versions of this uh, data set. So there is one unclean version and another one is clean. And so, so again, if we check some of the columns in the data set, we have a job title, salary estimate, job description, rating, company name, location, headquarters, size, uh, type of ownership, industry, a lot of um, information about this uh, job posting. And so for this one, my uh, suggestion would be to use uh, Python. And again, I want to give you a bit of framework to follow to uh, create this project. So in uh, terms of data cleaning, you can obviously load uh, the, the data set. So using pandas uh, to create a data frame. And then you can uh, check how to handle missing values. So identify columns with missing values, decide how to handle uh, these missing values. So maybe remove rows or maybe uh, impute missing values or replace with a default value. Then you can do a data type conversion. So check data types of all columns and convert them to appropriate types. So for example, converting string uh, dates to uh, data time uh, objects. Handle uh, duplicates and so check, uh, uh, remove rows that are uh, not necessary. Then you can do uh, outlier detection and treatment. So use statistical methods to identify outlier in the data set and uh, decide the approach for handling outliers. And so either removing them or capping them or kind of these are few examples. And then for data exploration, you can do a summary statistics. And so, you know, using descriptive statistics, like finding the mean, median, standard deviation of the different columns, and even do what is called uh, univariate analysis. And so analyze single variables through histograms, box plots, and frequency counts for every categorical variables. And so again, why is this project useful? Because uh, data cleaning and data exploration it takes probably 70 or 80% of the whole uh, tasks of a data analyst. And so again, it's super crucial to demonstrate this to uh, recruiters and potential employers. Another idea for a data analytics project is about NLP or natural language processing. And this is a bit of a more uh, technical project, maybe a bit more related to data science, but I wanted to include it here because this is a field that is becoming more and more popular. And so in this case, we have again a Kaggle data set that um, in this case consists of reviews of fine foods from Amazon. And so uh, is actually a data span of more than 10 years, um, 500,000 reviews up to October 2012. And again, if I uh, check the columns of this um, data set, I have the product ID, user ID, profile name, helpfulness numerator and denominator, the score, the time, the summary and the text of the, the review. So 
can check some as an example here. So here you have the, uh, the actual text of the review. And so again, if I can give you some ideas on how to uh, structure this uh, project, probably using uh, Python, since he has some libraries that are very useful for NLP. So you can do a sentiment analysis. And so question could be, uh, can we classify the sentiment of a, a review uh, as positive, negative, or neutral based on its uh, text context? And so an approach would be, for example, to pre-process the text content so using uh, methods like uh, tokenization, removing stop words, and then using stemming, then using the score column to label reviews. And so scores of four or five can be positive, one and two as negative and three as neutral. And then apply a basic model like the logistic regression to classify the sentiment of the reviews. Then another idea could be to work on a text summarization. So uh, can we automatically generate a concise summary for lengthy reviews? And so you can use extractive summarization techniques to select sentences from the review that effectively summarize the whole content. And then another interesting one could be detecting fake reviews. So a question could be other indications of fake or spammy reviews in the data set and can we develop a method to detect them? And our approach here could be to analyze patterns such as repeated uh, phrases, uh, reviewer behavior and uh, temporal patterns to identify potential fake reviews. And so again, if we check why this project is useful, um, one thing is that you demonstrate how you can handle uh, unstructured text data. And also, as I said at the start, NLP, natural language processing, is becoming more and more common. And so again, um, this could be kind of your competitive advantage when uh, presenting yourself in front of recruiters or potential employers. Now, let's say that you have worked on some of these projects and perhaps you have a few more that you worked on in the past. So the most important aspect now is to make sure that you present these projects in the best way possible. Obviously, you don't want to send the recruiter 200 lines of codes but you need to package your project uh, in a way that is super clear and effective to demonstrate the value that you can bring to a potential employer and if you need help with that you can use my portfolio template that uh, I use to make sure that I have a powerful story that makes all of my projects stand out in front of a recruiter and so if you also need an effective framework to package all of your projects download my template from the link in the description and if you think that this video was helpful, make sure to subscribe to the channel. And if you need more ideas for your portfolio, you can check these two additional ideas in the video that I made here. One is based on COVID data, so more related to healthcare industry, and one on an Apple Store data, so more related to the tech industry. In these videos, I walk you through the project from start to end so that you can replicate them and add them to your portfolio. And well, thanks for staying with me till the end. And let me know if you are going to do one of these nine projects idea. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments down below and well enjoy the rest of your day. Ciao for now and see you in the next one.